Hey, I think I'm live. I'm live. <gasps> That's rather than better than being dead. Oops. There I am. Hi, everybody. I'm StreamYard in it. Woo -hoo -hoo. How's everyone doing tonight? I'm Mary, the host of the group and of this wonderful class and presenter. There you go. Present. I like that presenter. Mm. <laughs> How's everyone doing on this? Oh, now sunny. It was cold. Did anyone have any? I should say cold. It was wet and rainy. Did anybody have wet and rain? I'm trying to figure out where the thing is to make it. Oh, there we go. Large screen. Woohoo. There I go. Hi. I can see myself now. How exciting. So there you go. I'm going to get started and. Welcome and enjoy the class. It's going to be a lot of information, just so you know. This one's going to be full of lot, so let's have a couple of drinks. I know yesterday I was really, really tired. It was a long day, long week. I had an enjoyable day today. Relax, watch some Netflix. I'm, I'm um, binge watching um, Suits. Oh my goodness, that's so good. I think. Anyways, my cup of tea. Lawyers. Mm. Uh, enjoy yours. Oh, and I got to do my thing. My doppelganger. We should be on there now. I think. I'm going to refresh. I don't know. It might take a minute longer. There I am. Doppelganging. Woo -hoo -hoo. And let's see. I'm going to say hello to everyone. Hello. And I'm going to wave. Gives me the double wave, triple wave. The water wave, because we had water today, but I do that all the time because I like the wave. And I'm going to give myself a heart because I love myself. We should all love ourselves, right? There you go. So I'll put that over there. And let's see if I can do this when it's like that. Um, stop cam. I want present. There we go. Slides. There. Oh, it's not coming on here. I did do that last time I tried it. So I think I got to go small screen, add it. I don't know if I can, I'm going to go large screen, see if I can do it this way. Oh, and it does let me here. All right, great. Now it puts it up when I did, did it that way. Oh, and one heart. That must be my heart. Yay. All right, that's me. Thank you all for coming. And even if you come late or do replays, don't forget your hashtag replay. Just enjoy. If you have questions, you can get the um, live thing as long as you post below, even if you're not truly live, 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 because I know there are some people busy as a bumblebee and maybe wanting to get out and enjoy the summer weather on a Wednesday evening after the rains today. So just... Do that. Ask questions. Do your aha moments. Oh, aha. Or any questions that you might have. So just enjoy it. And hopefully it will all come together to you. So because with the live bonus, you get a free support call. call. So that means just posting on the live event for me. So I would like some people to come live if they could, but I know that people are busy. And then all those all the different time frames and all those different things that are going on. So just post below and you can get that. So even if you are live and you're watching, you got to post so I know you're here. And with the StreamYard, you do have to put your name, I think, that way. Or I can hit reply and then it'll come up on Facebook, I think. So we'll kind of work it out, but you need to post something. And then and I'll reply to it and make sure that you get your bonus if you want. And that's a discounted one-on-one, -on -one, three-month coaching calls with me. You can get um, discounted one-on-one, -on -one, three-month coaching, or just a free support call. It's the one. Or you can get a don't. If you really like it, I will then transfer to a discounted three-month coaching call for you. And more details at the end. Let's see if I can, oops, there we go. I had to get to the next slide so I can see it. So are you ready to get started on homeschool styles and 
to the curriculum and activities and get your paper and pencil, get your guides going if you have them. If not, grab a guide. You don't need to. You can just take notes or come back and do it. And it's not too difficult, so you should be able to just fill it in later if you want or make your own notes and just do it that way. I talked to someone else who's like my sister, pen and paper on everything. So that's pretty fun that way. So whatever works, your homeschool vision, keep, take a minute to breathe it in and think about it because we want to make sure that we, you know, remember it and have those inside of us. Then we can bring that into all that we do to remember your why and your vision and breathe it all in fresh again, especially when you're starting planning or what, while you're doing the planning process and remembering all that fun you're going to have once it's all implemented with your children and your children and all the fam family fun learning that they're going to have. That's part of it. So, I mean, planning can be, you know, uh, a lot of some paperwork right now, writing it all in and fitting it in, especially next time we'll be fitting it all into the schedule and all that kind of things and figuring that out. And working on that. So it can be a lot of things, but just got to think, oh, once you get this all set, how oh, easy and simple and fun it will be, especially with adding some flux time in and things like that. So you got to use your vision, what you saw, what you were doing, what they were doing, how you were feeling and get that great feeling inside of you. And when you're doing that planning, having that great feeling inside of you, that's great. And your vision word or phrase, so we said phrase, and you can even post that. You know, your vision phrase, let's have having fun homeschooling all day in arts and nature or whatever it might be that you love and you want to do and your children want to do. And some want to do more things than others, right? Some love the arts, some love the nature, some love both. Mine was the art and nature. I love more nature and he brought in the arts. And so we kind of brought it together. Um, so if you were if you are working on something that you really care about, you don't have to be pushed. That vision will pull you. So let's use that vision to pull us, to get us to where we need to go. Get get us through all that planning, right? All that planning stuff that can be kind of boring, but you got to make it fun and use that vision and write it down and how it's going to look. It's that planning and like the, the architecture and the structure of it all. And building that, that up, that foundation, so it'll all fill in beautifully together. So what is curriculum? I mean, I just asked that on the Facebook. What is curriculum? I mean, some people just think textbooks, textbooks, textbooks. Well, that's part of it and can be. It doesn't have to be all it. And you don't even have to use them all. I do kind of recommend that at least you do a math curriculum with, with textbooks, you know, or you can do like the workbooks you know, first, second, third. So you have that continuum with math and they get the basics and it, because it really does go on each other. Science is that way too, but my son did science in um, grade school and I started homeschooling in fifth grade. And I just did with him until um, high school, I did just experiments once a week, sometimes twice, sometimes we skipped a week. So we just did that. We learned some different terms and just different things, how it worked. We used YouTube videos and watch things and watch their experiments. And just we had just had fun. We didn't even use a textbook. We didn't do that for all, all of our stuff, just mainly for math. And even though we ended up using the Khan Academy, which was online. So we're going to talk about a few of those. But anyways, it's textbooks and activities in the field trips, all that doing, all those hands-on activities that children love to do and need to do, you know. And it looks different as they get older, you know, different things like that. But And field trips are so important, going to that discovery world and seeing it all in action. And discovery world has some homeschooling. Some of you are, discovery world for us is our science museum, I don't know where everyone has different ones, where you're at, but look at the map, see what ones have it. We also have, which is great, it brings the art and nature together. And I didn't find it until my son was a little bit 
older, but he they still had some stuff through high school, but they have from preschool all the way through high school, different activities, and there's great things there for homeschoolers and regular children too, just all different ones on weekends and things too. And they bring nature and the arts together and it's wonderful. But all those different things. And and then your classes, online classes, videos, all those different things. That's all part of your curriculum. Whatever you use for them to learn. And almost everything is for them to learn. Even cooking. And lots of cooking because I love cooking. So your curriculum is the goal of the learning, of all that learning, whatever it might be. You know, math, multiple tables. Multiple ca- multiplication tables, blah, I can get it out. Multiplication, and I love math. And it can be, you know, vocabulary words for those language arts. It can be all those different things. So that, I don't know, I think it might show. Oh, hi, someone's watching, I think. It's showing on stream or not here though. So I'm not sure if it takes time between the two. I'm not sure how that works, but. Post below and say hello, questions, let me know. So all those different hands-on activities I talked about and experiments you see on there, we did some different ones. I had a mini lab with test tubes and things. We did a lot of magnets to begin with. He loved magnets. I still love great things. Then mixing things together, just, you know, things that can mix and not mix and how they do and making that goop and all those different things and how that works and learning how it works and why it works and using their learning styles. You know, are they more visual or hands-on? Most are usually really hands-on to begin with, but some need that auditory and hearing it too, you know, different things. So using all those different things to really learn what they, um, what kind of learning style your child is, what's the key one for that child and using your own homeschooling style. So we're gonna talk all about that kind of thing. And um, hopefully quickly, but curriculum is all learning. So it's the goal of the learning is the main thing, then the knowledge and the reading the materials. So that's the textbook part or that reading. You might have do lap booking, which is great. And they have some reading materials sometimes with them, depending on the age range, because they go up to the third, fourth grade, even some a little bit older than that, where they have a lot of um, written materials different things like that in the um, lap books. And you can get a lot of free printables with those, but you know, they're kind of like a workbook kind of thing. So it's great. Um, So books and videos, YouTubes, other videos out there, there's tons of different videos. And a lot of these can be free. And on the Khan Academy, they have a lot of free ones. They don't just have science and math anymore. They have tons, they have different arts and things. You can go to the, um, museum websites and they have tons of pictures. Some even have some very great educational things that you can use and download just to do some arts for the children, um, things like that. And the homework from the textbooks or that you could just create. I did my own planning and I have some of that if you're interested. Mine, I did more because I started older so they're for the older children, most of them. I do have some lap books for the youngers that I kept. So if you want some of those, some ideas but you can do that. And I, I made my own, I had, you know, writing, I did a lot of literature and I did art and history and having to write that. I did even some herbology, learning about plants and where they grow the best in the, what countries, what countries use, what kind of um, herbs and spices and what are they good for medicinally? Cause I'm very much in that natural, all that natural um, healing. So your homework, all those different things can bring in that reading and writing and that knowledge, those vocabulary words and learning the things and then now bringing it into themselves and their daily lives. And you can bring the herbology and you can do some cooking and learning what those spices taste like. Smell, using all their senses, right? And kind of understanding how that, how that all works together. And then digging deeper and bringing it into different areas and expanding it. And those are usually some more reading possibly along with that, as well as some more activities and all those different things bringing it into different areas. And that's what's great about lap books because it brings all the different areas with it too. 
So that's a great one, especially with the younger children. And then you can bring it into notebooking. And I talk about that in my one class. If you're interested, I have a PowerPoint on that. So just say lap booking. You want to know about it, just post it down and I'll send it to you. And it's great. And we can go over it really quickly if you want to. You can look at it and then we can go through it. And it brings all the different areas. It can bring math and science and language and all those different things for um, your health. Just depends on the topic as well. And then learning styles are essentially the way students approaches and masters the new material. You know, whether it's just writing down and they have to write it down and make notes. Sometimes they may, especially when they're younger, it may not be words, but it may be pictures, things like that. And numbers, doing all those different things, and maybe even communicating and relating it together and helping each other and explaining it to each other. That's what's great about having a family. Maybe they can help each other out and talking. I'm just going to take a peek, see if anyone's on live. Okay. Okay. I'm just making sure it shows um, what slide I'm on. That's kind of cool. Okay. Anyways, um, so visual, auditory, um, read and write, you know, that more those kind of things and cosmetics. I can never pronounce that word right. Um, the hands on kind of thing. So visual is like they have to see it. So that's more those um, videos and things and showing them in front of them, you know, and having those visual aids and things like that. And those textbooks and all those pictures are great for that. And they do bring in a little bit, not a lot, not the hands-on. Those the Saxon Math will talk about that. They do have some kits for the younger children to help them with the hands-on. So it could be maps and graphics, organizers, things like that. They might like those different um, um, uh, folders putting like, you know, in a binder, all different kinds of folders together and putting some different visuals in there. And it just can be, as I said, their own drawings and designs and things and figuring it out in, from their head and then putting it down on paper. And with colored pencils or crayons and things like that, markers. Oops, okay, I'm trying to get my cursor and figuring out, uh, change the slide. Um, auditory, that's the hearing, obviously and that and they need to listen so the video can do both right the video you can visualize it as well as hear it and then explain it so kind of as a visual aid is really good with the, um the videos doesn't have quite the hands-on but you can kind of see it and then they show you and then if you can have it there too sometimes you can do that but you watch it once and then you can say oh, let's try to do it and then you can do it in your own kitchen or on the table, things like that. Oh, it doesn't have the time up there. I have to find the time to see how much time I've um, taken. So I can, oops, I gotta get back on there. Okay, um, so those kinds of things and just talking it through with them and then having them talk it back with you and explaining it and asking those questions and you asking them questions and seeing if they're really what they're understanding. And that's great for everyone. I mean, the, most everyone's some different. They're not just all auditory or not all kinetic or all this or all that. They're kind of a mix. They may, 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 bleh, they may be more auditory. They may be more visual. They may be more hands-on. But we all learn through all of them to some degree. Um, so reading and writing, the students with a strong reading and writing and who love to read and write, you know, and they may just do that and they may start, instead of writing, they might be drawing to first because they can't do those, but then they might be, become more of a writer. That was my son. He was more, he did that, even though he was in school for a while, but he, he did love the drawing. So he did that, but he made it into words too. And so he actually became an illustrator of his own stories and wrote his own stories with pictures with it too. It was really kind of cool. Um, so depending on your child and how they do so that they can bring some of those visuals into the reading and writing. So that can be a good combination and they could become an illustrator. Um, my son's going to become a film director or that's what he's going to school for now. And he works at the Oriental Theater. So, and he's working on a film to um, 
put, put in with the oriental film. So anyways, um, so they learn best through reading and writing. So that's the nice, sometimes usually quieter ones where they can sit in the corner and read and write, but you want to bring them in and, you know, join the, join the group sometimes though too, right? So, and then, you know, the note takers and just writing it all down. They're kind of, see, they still are auditory, auditory and they're listening. But they also might be just reading and then writing their notes. I do that too. I'm not as much as hands-on, but I love the touchy sensory things. But I do, I am seeing myself as a reading and writing when I'm, you know, putting this together and thinking about it. I am because I love the reading and writing and taking my notes and journaling and things like that. So you can might see yourself in some of these yourself too. And then in your children, you can kind of see where they're at and some may be more of one or the other, but you don't want to not have a variety. That's why I think an eclectic approach to um, your curriculum is the best. Kinetics is these two are that more hands-on. They really need to. And those are the really young ones always usually are. They're rarely not. They may be an auditory as well, but they need that hands-on and figuring out and that that touch. We all need it in the beginning. I mean, that they say infancy and that holding that infant and, you know, that bonding, that's part of that, you know. And they may become less that and more something else. It doesn't mean they don't love you and that have that nurturing, but... They do, and they need that. We all need it to some degree. And it's good to have them see that and show it. So it's good to have hands-on activities, even though they're more of a reading or writing, but to have some of that hands-on. You just got to be careful. Some, because they're more that, they may have some sensory things. And, you know, that's when you get, you know, wear those um, maybe some plastic gloves for them and things like that, if that's part of um, how they are different things like that. So you gotta be watchful of that. And here's just some links that you could um, use for the different things. So homeschooling styles now. The general overview of the important aspects of your homeschool helps you decide on all your homeschooling curriculum choices. So this is where you're going to then decide before that's your activities and textbooks, what, how many textbooks and what are you going to have or what how much hands-on activities what kind of things you can do how many field trips what are you going to do how much videos are you going to use those kind of things now it's a style it's like the type nature art science all those things not that you can have some of those but what are you going to use more of and you can because you can use nature but you can bring science and art into the nature and watch mainly more nature kind of things because you can draw nature and nature can be science with the growing and how things work and how the world works and geography and those kind of things. So the arts and science and nature, and it can be all or it can just be one or two. And as I said, it doesn't mean you're not gonna have science because you need to have science, but you can have science within your arts. Cause I did that with my son, he loved the arts. So for his um, science class, his senior year, I think it was, his junior or senior year, I can't remember, because I think you have to, you had to have science every year. So it might have been his, junior, his senior year where we did anatomy, because he wasn't much of a science person, so we did anatomy. But he learned the basics of anatomy. We did a very basic anatomy book, but we also did an anatomy for the arts book with it. So then he could use it and help him with his drawing and how I did that together and how we worked when he was talking about the, all the hand parts. And then we went into the book and learned about all how to draw your hand. So then he drew the hand and then with, you know, all the bones he learned and the name. So it kind of worked together. It was really great. And he loved it so much because he got to do the arts with it. Those kind of things. So there's those kind of some kind of things that you can do within your own homeschool just to help your child to be encouraged and to love to learn, even though that is not his favorite thing, but you need to have science. So let's bring a science that, you know, that he can love to learn even with the arts and things like that. 
Um, and same with nature and things like that, because you can do a lot of, with nature, you can do a lot of science with that and arts. That's the easier one. So, and they can do more traditional everything, which is, and I, I did that in the very beginning, especially when you're first starting, you know, you're more traditional, maybe trying to figure it out, lay of the land, you know, getting getting that um, schedule together, getting it all together, because it's a lot of what all are you going to do together, you know, and even if the second or third year, it's like, okay, and if you have a lot of children, okay, they're learning more of this and you're learning that, so you got to bring different things together. And you can do online, that kind of things, on schooling, which is just all whatever the children are interested in, whether it's arts, nature, science, whatever it might be. And with that, you could do kind of some lap booking ideas. So you can get some lap books on certain topics that they want to do that they're interested in, astronomy or um, farms or different animals, um, eclectic which is just a combination. You do some online, you do some, maybe some unschooling kind of things in some different areas, like with the arts and different things like that. And I do that with my science, with the lab work until he got in high school. Um, he had to be more of a, have more of a traditional, I felt, science that way. And a lab and all that. And I had a great homeschooling parent with my homeschool group when I had it then in person. And it was great. And she, I had a doctor and we did a couple of um, lab works with her with um, dissecting um, frogs and um, sheep brain and some different things. I forget exactly. And she helped with that. It was really great. And I got a nice microscope and I shared it out and lent it out to the other homeschool parents with different slides. And we used it for our labs. It was really kind of neat. So what do you have in your house? And this will give you a hint at what you saw in your vision. Did you see them doing nice art things and creating? Were you, because bring what you love too, whether it's art and science or nature and different things within that with different different sciences. I mean, architecture, that's what my, my husband loved. I mean, he's into computers now, but he thought about becoming an architect. Those kind of things. What? And he has different things. He did arts and he did drawing. So I guess that's where my son got his um, artistic um, nature from and things like that. And I love the nature and I kind of brought that in. And he liked it and he loved it, but he, he also loved the drawing. So he brought that in with it and was, did a lot of different drawings. So what did you see in that vision? What were they doing? What were you doing? Were you helping them with the arts? You were painting? Were you drawing? Were you gardening together? Were you just doing some science activities or just cooking and having fun? Or were they just doing the textbooks? That, that's what you know when you feel comfortable with. And that's okay too. You start wherever you're at and you'll grow to whatever you need to be for your family. And then more traditional. And that's one that we usually start with. I know I did, and I know some other ones did, and it feels comfortable, and that's what we know, and that's how we feel the children learn and things like that. And it's not a bad way to go, and you may stay that way the whole way through. And that may be great for your children. It might be great for you just to keep it going and ha you having a very simple rhythm to your day. And it just might be an easy flow for you. Um, it's a good starting point and easier to manage the ba the basics of school. You have usually a little bit more textbooks, and not as many activities, but you can bring those in and you can bring them in slowly and you can think about it, you know, and you have your different textbooks um, and some field trips still, hopefully a few and maybe some labs and activities you can um, for that science projects and things. They'll, they'll usually in the book have a list of very simple, some things in your that you have in your home and you can um, have some simple activities in home, in your kitchen and things like that to start with. And you have more of a, just a traditional hourly schedule. And we'll have more about different types of schedules. Um, and of course, a traditional one 
um, next time, tomorrow, the last class, it'll be the schedule. Get it all, fit it all in. There are some programs where you get the textbooks and planning. So you can get it where you can get everything sent to you. It's a little bit more expensive. And then you can actually send in all the work. They'll correct it and give it back to you. And you can have them redo it if you feel that they need to. Or you, you know, just do the grades and things like that. So, and you can have a way to just buy your own and you grade it. I didn't have them do any of the tests personally. My sister, she was a big thing about tests. She did the homework, the test, everything. I'm not a good test taker. I didn't want to put that on my son either. And I knew him well enough that, okay, I knew who was getting it. When he did the homework, I talked to him. We did it. We had those conversations. So I didn't do the tests. He did the homework and we moved on to the next part. So you can decide if you want, because most textbooks will have a test usually with it. And that's not a bad thing. You can do it or not. That's up to you. And I think it's time for a drink, don't you? Ah, traditional. Tradition. I love that from Fiddler on the Rock. Tradition. We do something more than twi twice. My husband says tradition because I love traditions. Our family, growing up, we had all kinds of traditions. So online is the basics of school as well can be, but it can be more um, untraditional in the sense, you know, you can just have them do that class until they have it done and then go on to the next one. So it can be at 15 minutes or an hour, depending on how long it takes. There are all online classes usually, and um, it can be also easier to manage, you know, there's different ones out there. Um, less space, no textbooks to worry about. They have um, online reading and PDF kind of things. You can print them out if you want with some of them. I think most you can, the few that I know of. I don't know. There might be some that you can, but anyways. Um, and then you can still do your field trips and those hands-on lab activities. I did switch on schoolhouse with science when my son was in high school. And he did a general one and then um, nature one, um, I forget it was not nature, natural science, I think it was something like that. And then he did anatomy the last year. And then I forget what he did, biology, because he did all that lab work his um, junior year. <laughs> I didn't think how it went. It was crazy because his senior year, he didn't do it. A lot he was doing, um, actually went to UWM and did some art classes there at the Peck School of Arts. And he had to do a portfolio to get in and different things. So it was great. But online, so you can do all that. They have the Khan Academy, which is great for online. So you can do different online programs. You don't have to do all one set, but they do have all one set, just like the curriculum. And a lot of the curriculum ones now are all online to where you can just watch it online um, they'll have um, videos you can watch anytime. Some have specific times. We have to be there at certain times. So there's just different ones and how it's all set up. So you just got to kind of look at that, what your schedule looks like. If you want the more flex where that you can, they can go on anytime. They go at midnight. I mean, not that hopefully your kids aren't up at midnight, but who knows? Depending on your schedule, if you're a third shift family, things like that. They do things like that. I have heard in Las Vegas with um, childcare and with schools. So it can be, it can be expensive, just like the other one you can do where they do everything for you and it's all online and they just go on. And sh I mean, one better thing about that with the other one, it's curriculum and it's textbooks. You still have the textbooks. You have that space you need. But this one, it can be expensive because they need to have the um, laptop or uh, something to go on. I would think hopefully a laptop, but I don't know. You can do the um, smaller version computers, and I can't think of what they're called right now for some reason. Um, it can be one of the easier ones that way. So it just depends on what you do. If you do more eclectic online or all in one package where then there's teachers and they do it all, or if you set it all up and you get the curriculum. So there's tons within this you can do. So it can be very expensive to very reasonably or cheap. The Khan Academy for Math and Science, if you decide to do that, it's all online, but it's free. 
and it's really great and it's really good and even some um, regular schools use it um, that way. And some you got to watch out to make sure that it's not an online public school system because if it is, it's not technically homeschooling. Your child is at home, but they're still in the school system and so they have to have pass fail or pass those classes, take certain classes. So it's not technically homeschooling. I had a few that did that. They still came to my homeschooling um, program on Thursdays to get some more social interaction and have some fun and do some different hands-on activities and some different, our Thursday classes, we had some art classes too and different things. So then they came for that as well, but they did the online and it was a public school online program where they had to do all the different things. So you just have to be careful just to make sure that that's what it, it, what it is or isn't. And if that's okay with you, I'm not saying good or bad, it's just different and it can be great. So on schooling is letting your child lead the way. So what they wanna do, and that's why I said lap booking might be great for this, um, especially in the very beginning for the younger ones. The older ones, I don't know how that would work as well. I'm just thinking with high school, you know, they, you know, to, um, Put that all together in a portfolio for them to go on to college things like that so i don't know that part because i never done found schooling for that but i have done it and helped for younger children and it's great because i did um pass fail for my son um all the way through eighth grade in high school i didn't because i recommended that you didn't so they can go into college and then they can see the letter grades and all those different things and how well he's doing so those kind of things, because then you'd have to put all that on screen into clarifying this is a math and this is a science as in the subjects to put it in there for them to see into a more traditional grading system and a more traditional. Um, um, so you have to have the, the grade and the, all of that and all the um, classes that they take in. So it'd be, I think, harder to do for high school, but for up through grade school, even up through eighth grade, it would be something that could be very interesting, fun, and they can dig deeper into so much and whatever their interests are. Not that you can't do that with other ones, but this one's just fully that way. And they, I think they really would have to be a little bit more self-motivated for this. And you as a teacher parent help them to get their full math and what they need from math so they have that all and they can pass the math test for in college if that's what they need to do those kind of things so it can be a little bit more difficult that way for the older children but i see it as a great tool and great motivator for the younger ages electric which i chose to do eventually i did traditionally i went into um, electric and just kind of did a mismatch of all kinds of things and even in the beginning, I did a little bit more mismatch, but it was more of a traditional mismatch, <laughs> I guess. Uh, different curriculum books, um, textbooks kind of things with that, plus some online, online classes and some in-person classes. So, and it can be a lot cheaper, especially if you do, you know, you're doing it all. So you can pick and choose some easy, cheap ones like the Khan Academy, it's like going back to there's easy peasy, and there's all kinds of different ones out there that are free that you can choose and you can find you can just do a lot of um, workbook kind of things and different topics, things like that. And the lap booking, as I like to talk about too. Um, and more interactive and planning. It takes a lot more planning to do things, you know, a variety of different things to make sure that you have all the different subjects and all the different things that they need and and getting to love it. And you can this in, include a variety, easy, of the um, their learning styles too, especially if you have several different children that may have several different learning styles. One might be more auditory, one may be more kinesthetic, one be more um, auditory and different things like that. And so lap booking, as I said, and unit studies, which is really similar to lap booking, it's kind of like 
the older version of it where you do a unit of it, a full unit on different things. And um, so many more. Those are the traditional more Waldorf and Montessori and things like that. Um, I don't go, I didn't go into, but different things. So you can do some different research, but I think, you know, that's plenty to choose from. And you don't want to have too much to choose from because you already have enough out there already that's like overwhelming. And sometimes you just got to pick it and start. And I think it's, let's start and have a cup of, well, this is my favorite coffee. And it's even gourmet coffee. It's um, from Fiddlehead's Coffee. They had a deal, so I had buy one, get one free. So I got that. So down below in, your, in the comments, share your thoughts. You know, what kind of homeschooling style do you think you would like to have? You know, arts and nature with um, the more eclectic kind of approach or more traditional you're going to start with just to get your, your feet wet. And then maybe you'll add some more different things with it. All those different things. What do you love? What do you children love? The arts and nature. Do you have a garden? Do you? What do you have in your house? Do you have paintings? Do you let them paint like I did my room, all different colors? So, all those different fun things. And now the subjects, because we've got to put that all into subjects. So you're reading. Now this is Wisconsin, so you may have some different ones, but these are pretty much you know, overall what they have. Um, reading, of course, that's pretty easy. Language, arts, the vocabulary, the writing skills, all that, different things. Um, mathematics, textbooks, usually. Not that you can't have them for language, arts, and um, reading, obviously, you definitely can have reading textbooks, things. I never did. I just had them, had my son read and things like that. Though I did not have them very young. In, he had to, he went to school and learned the basics of reading already there. So I didn't have to worry about that so much. Just, you know, help them with vocabulary, words, things like that. Textbooks, more traditional workbooks. Um, you can do activities with that cooking and things, math, social studies. There's a geography, government, history, those kind of things. And even with social studies, we did geography and we, my son planned a uh, Mini vacation of um, to Beloit. So somewhere near Wisconsin or near Milwaukee, he had to do. So he could pick the lacrosse, he could have picked wherever, just I said with an hour, hour and a half to two hours away, where you want to go and what you want to do. And he, we went for the weekend and he planned all the different activities and the museums we went to and things like that. So you could do something fun like that. And give them the map, and that's what's great about that. You could give a traditional more map of your area and what's close or you can you know you can go online and search it up I think he did go online I don't remember um <laughs> to tell you the truth because that was about 15 years ago ish I don't know when he did it exactly but anyways so that's something kind of fun you can do and government we talked about the supreme court judges we did that plus some other things um, he did a traditional U.S. history and world history class in high school. Um, science, um, the two traditional textbooks are online. Um, as I said in the beginning, we did mainly just experiments and gardening and cooking. That's what we did. We did a lot of just ex um, activities with that in the beginning. We didn't do any textbooks until high school. Um, and health, the same thing. We didn't do any textbooks, but there are some out there, and I have some. For you. Um, so picking them all out, your textbooks and activities. Reading and language arts, vocabulary, grammar, essay and writing skills. So you can have them just write, you know, read a short book or do one I did for somebody um, in my homeschool group. Um, we did uh, short stories and then we did poems and things like that. So they had to write poems and learn how that was. We did short stories and then it just you could just do a little um, book reports on those, depending on how their ages and getting them to know to do the intro, body, and conclusion kind of thing. Um, reading anytime, just reading, you know. 
and enjoying a book. They can pick a book. You can you you pick a book. They pick a book. That's what my sister did, you know, and I did too. I I did that. Now who did that first? I I think I did because I started homeschooling first. So um, those kind of things. Um, so then it's something that you feel that they need to read, you know, things like that. And then they can have something more fun. You can limit it. You know, I did. Yeah. You know, my son, I limited a little bit. You know, you can just read comic books or something that way. I mean, at least not for school anyways. Comic books can be fun. Language arts are those conversations, too. I just having those conversations about what the books and what they're reading Things like that. Um, so there's a sunlight. These are more of the curriculum textbooks you can do. The, um, so I've got a few here, but there's tons more. And just put down, you want the freebie for curriculum. I'm going to put in the guides. You know what? I'm just going to put it in the guides, all the freebies. I have one that talks all about the, the curriculum and some textbooks with tons of different links, which reviews them as well as gives you some different ones. So then you can look at them. Now, don't overwhelm yourself with too many. Just, just pick one. <laughs> you know, eventually go through them and like, okay, you're not sure, pick a top two. Maybe ask a, another homeschooling family what they like or what they've used. Look it up, try it. Maybe even use theirs if you want, if they're done and you can use it. So then it's cheaper for you. So you can do things like that and swap. Um, we did that in our family. I gave my sister my books as my son got done. She gave her books to um, our nephew and um, niece for their home, um, for their children to use, things like that. So, you know, um, Sunlight, all about learning press um, and brave writers. Now I'm going to put these in the guide section so then you can look at them and look at mine. You can copy and then search on that too as well. Math activities, cooking. Oh, I love cooking. Cooking is good for math, science, and even health. It's just great for all those things. Sharing equal amounts and more um, measuring. It can be for vocabulary. You can, you know, those um, vocabulary words, um, setting the table for the younger ones, how, who's all home, who's not home. Add, subtract. Do we have company over? How many do we add? All those different things. Um, budgeting, I did, um, I have a class, I had a class on budgeting, so if you want that, just let me know. I mean, just message me, say, hey, you know, think about this, do you have anything on it? And I'm like, okay, maybe I do. So I've done a different, um, whole bunch of different ones for my son, as well as for um, other homeschools that I did. Um, so budgeting, um, which, which will be with checkbooks, so you can use it with, if you do do a, an allowance for your children, so you can kind of do that kind of thing. Um, plenty of different games, um, shapes and patterns for the younger kids and even some of the older kids for difficult um, patterns and geo shapes. So those hands-on fun activities, different things, and even some different games and experiments for math as well. And math textbooks, Singapore Math, Math UC, um, Beast Academy, and I didn't put it here on my own. We use Saxon math, unless it's on the next slide. I don't remember how many slides I did on it. Oh, I did Saxon math. And they have the ones, and some other ones might. I don't know them as well. They have, for the younger children, they have a pack of stuff of hands-on activity things. I didn't use it at that age group, but I've heard from other homeschoolers and going on there. Um, yes, it costs a bit of money things like that, but it's great because it's right there and they have the textbook with it and then they have the activities right there and everything that you need. Um, so it makes it convenient. They also had, which I did do for my son, is a CD is for additional help. So they had the textbook, but if you need a little extra, they had extra stuff there to give them some more videos and different things to help them understand the math. He wasn't a great math and science person. He was more into the arts, as you should know by now. But that way, and I don't know what age that started at for sure for him. I don't think I did it the first couple of years. I think it was like starting in eighth grade for sure he did the CDs. But, and when they stopped doing the activities, I think that in third grade they stopped having those activity bags. 
Not that you have to get them. You can get this the straight textbooks and you can add your own activities like just doing your own math and experiments along with it to explain fractions and different things like that. Um, and then the CAD Academy, which the Khan Academy, which I talk about all the time, it's free too. Other ones are not, you know, and there's good, some ones are easy peasy. They have all the different ones. So you can look at some of the different free ones out there. Um, science activities, science experiments, and you can search those pretty easily and find them or just go half price bookstore is a great one too. Just picking some books there and going through and picking out different experiments and trying them out, going to the science and surplus. I don't know where they all are, um, but we have a great science and surplus store, which is fairly cheap and they have tons of different um, science stuff and books. You can do it there. Cooking again, of course, all about what you emphasize with the conversations. That's what it's all about. You know, with the cooking, it can be more about math. It can be more about science, cause and effect and things like that. It can be more about health and herbology and how does this, um, and nutrition and things like that. And then you can do um, weather things and rain gauging and watching and gardening, those kind of things with science. And so you don't have to use a textbooks, but you can. Apologia, it's a very popular one. I did not use it. And it's very comprehensive. It's very great. It gets high recommendations from a lot of homeschoolers. So that one, Real Science Odyssey, um, Mystery Science, that sounds cool. And then Switch on Schoolhouse, I use that one. I use a CD program, which is great. You could switch up all the different things with it with the CD. So if you want more of the test to um, be more um, for the grade, because it does all the grading for you, a CD, and it's fairly cheap. I forget how much, 50 bucks. I'm not sure for the year. And it had all the stuff on there. So you read a chapter or however on there, and then he did some question and answers. And then he had a test after how many units, things like that. And it was really great. And then you can decide how much the homework counted compared to how much the tests counted and things like that. Um, sociology, history, geography, culture, political science, psychology, economics. I think I might need to get moving a little bit. What time is it going to be? Oh, yeah, it's almost time. So museums and field trips. So I'm going to go through this a little faster. Geography um, and looking at places to visit, like I said, history, Supreme Court. I did that with my son and all the presents. I did that with him too. And there's plenty of online classes and different things to look up. And just right now, even all the politics going on, gardening and um, finding herbs and where they, the origin, all that, and where they best grow. I did that. Um, textbooks, the story of the world, history, odyssey, um, Time for Learning, and Time for Learning has all the different ones. Health activities, gardening, exercise. My sister joined the gym and do that. Cooking, chores. That's a great one for chores, doing the shoveling, gardening, um, weeding, lawn mowing. Uh, what did I also do? Um, well, I didn't have a health book, but there are some Abeka health books. A lot of them have a health book with them if you do the um, whole program. Um, individual, individual units and books, science and anatomy um, can be considered for health as well. Never did textbook in health myself. I never did. So there you go. Um, not that you have to or not, but not that you shouldn't talk about the health we do um, with our eating and all that. We did for sure and just different things. Foreign languages, it's not required by us just for college. So um, there's some different ones here. Um, I, we did obviously a lot of different art activities. You can do that. You can even have them help you home de decorate, home decorate their bedroom, things like that. YouTube videos, art activities. You can do your own and then you can expand out. I do have some on um, photo and art, um, different ones. So if you want those, just let me know. Um, and there's our textbooks. So, um, Physical education is the chores and all that, and joining the gym. 
And don't forget other classes, arts, fun, ours. I won't have time today, but I should have tomorrow going through it again. Um, all that. So additional subjects, arts, foreign language, religion, mechanics. My sister did that mechanics. Her husband did it with their grandchildren. Mechanics along with driving at driver's ed. So it's great. Um, woodworking if you can. I know anyone. And classes, YouTube videos, tutoring um, if you need to. And you can use other um, homeschool children to help tutor each other. Um, just different workbooks, lap books, unit studies, those kind of things. And field trips. So there we go. And that's the vision. So just do your research. Ask other homeschoolings. Um, look at other Facebook groups. Even ask in ours. And post below. Say what you did. What you've used before. What you're thinking of using. You know. Or what you need help with. So um, do the guide. Review it. Um, go through it. I think I'll go through it real quick with you. Let's see if I can um, change this out real quick. And remove. I'm going to add the guide. I'm going to go um, there we go, go large. OK. I'm going to get past. I should have done this already. I didn't realize. Day, oops, day two. That's where we're at, day two. Oh, day one, day two. All right. Um, your homeschool. Oh, I still can't read it too well. All right. Um, so the activities you're going to use, all those different things, textbooks, things like that. So you just kind of write it down. Just some different ideas, what you just thought of right now. You know, what art activities you want to do more art and you want some classes and to look for those things like that. Math and science, your subjects specific. This one's just about different activities that you want to do and incorporate more arts or nature and science. Um, what you know about your homeschooling styles or what you want to bring in, those kind of things. And these are the subjects. Do you want to use a textbook or not? Do you want to use a Khan Academy or not online or free? What what different things? Just some ideas, some more ideas for the different subjects that you want to add. And you I didn't mention sports. Those are sometimes harder to find, but you can do that. Um, and then your next steps, what textbooks, the things you want. And look at the guide. I'm going to add those to that for you that way. Um, classes, I do help. We're going to have some language arts, brain up classes. And we're going to have some preschool classes and a book club. So you, they'll have a reading club. So you can have your reading done just with um, our monthly club if you want. Things like that. You can um, add to it more if you want to. Things like that. And then it's day three. So there we go. And I'm going to minimize that. Stop that. Remove. And there we go. So I did go through it yesterday. So I'm not going to do it today. I'll do it tomorrow. Because it is just about 7 o'clock. So I didn't want to go too much over. But we have um, Brain Up class, and we have that from Rebecca, and they're going to be coming on next week or the week after. I forget which. We're going to be posting that after this class early next week so that we can um, have that. And uh, Nicole is going to also come in and talk about her class. And so you can get some ideas of the different classes that we're going to have in the Kids Corner. And it's all going to start September 5th that week after Labor Day. Um, once a week, their classes, um, the kids' corners of that are going to be um, once a month. One's going to be on art. One's going to be on um, reading and that kind of thing. Then a monthly support group with questions and answers, things like that. And we're going to maybe, hopefully doing that maybe during the day. We'll um, post and ask questions of best times for everybody and do some polling and DMing, so look in your DMs, you know, and if you have ideas, let us know. We also have a group, um, Homeschooling Your Way. So just kind of go in there and say, hey, this, I like, I like this, I like that, I have that question. You know, you did mention about this text. Do you have anything on this topic? 
because I have a whole bunch of different ones. I'm not going to post all of those, but I'm going to post my freebie about different curriculums and with links and the PowerPoint. So you can go through those. The guide is already up there. So I'm going to do that for you um, now, yesterday's and today's, so that you can have that to re review with you and your guide. So you can go through that. And it's going to be there all through August, but then I'm going to take it down because I'm going to start charging for this class. I think it's that great and that good especially since I'm going to offer everybody who posts below and do hashtag retay, retay, uh, the replay, gosh, whew, and post their aha moments, so what they liked, what they thought was great, what helped them, and all that great stuff. So post below, and you can get a free call of me, and I can help you with some different stuff and get your homeschool going. So you take care. And you have a great evening and come back next time for putting out together. I'm getting some schedule schedule ideas and putting that all together with all those activities and things you're thinking about in your head, getting it all written down now. And so you could get that schedule really going for you for starting. So I'm out of here. Oh, take one last drink. Mm, good. Mm mm mm. You got that vision in your head going and all excited and you're going to get all that stuff, all those different things. I know this is the hardest part right now is figuring out. Okay, but just take that jump and leap and pick one curriculum for this, one for this, one for that, whatever it is, or pick an all in one and just do it oh, and just get it going. Because guess what? You can change it up next year. You can change it up in December and start with a new set that way. And you can just do it what makes it work. And you can kind of change it up a little bit if you need to every year. Or I wouldn't do it more than once a semester because you want to give it enough time. So that would be my recommendation. You don't want to change things up too often and too much. So until tomorrow night, I hope you have a great evening and enjoy your favorite drink and relax a little. I'm going to go take a walk with my hubby, maybe have a little food, and I will chat with you tomorrow. Have a great one. Bye, everybody.